Assalamu alaikum everyone, good morning. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here today. Thank you for coming um, so early in the morning. I came in today and I said, how should I start my talk? What would be the best way? And I said, let's look at our world today. Our world today has a different landscape, different challenges. The business world is radically changing. Technology is altering the way we work. And our society promotes the pursuit of money and with it a materialistic lifestyle. This reality has diverted our attention from taking responsibility in making our world a better place for every human being living on Earth. There are many struggles happening around us. Poverty, human rights violations, diseases, war. One person cannot fix all, nor they are expected to. But together, we need to focus our skills, unite, and take a stand where we believe we can make a difference. For me, cancer caught my attention. Beside my full-time job in media, I am the founder of Pure Heart for Cancer program. The program is started by three remarkable ladies and I. The program focuses on guiding cancer survivors back to work and helping them to become an active member of society in order to lead an independent life. Our goal is to turn the challenges created by cancer into an opportunity, hope, and support network, as well overcome the challenges that exist in our society by tackling misconception and raising awareness about the cause. Nonetheless, change the business world to embrace diversity. And I'll say it again, change the business world to embrace diversity. Diversity is not about having different nationalities working in an organization. Diversity should resemble society, but on a smaller scale. Meaning, you should have a colleague who has Down syndrome, a colleague who's visually impaired, a colleague who's physically challenged. This is diversity. It's all about how an organization interacts with its environment. And by doing so, it will not only create a culture that is competitive, but will also make a positive change in our society. The concept of Pure Heart for Cancer program is new, and many wonder why it's important to hire cancer survivors back to work. Well, let's take a look at cancer. The World Health Organization is calling cancer the global burden. There are 13 million people diagnosed with cancer every year. If the trend continues, Cancer is expected to become an epidemic even though it's not a contagious disease, reaching 25 million people every year. There are currently 35 million people living with cancer today, in which 40% range from the age of 20 to 50, which are the most productive years of employment and raising a family. Now, this doesn't tell us why it's important to hire cancer survivors back to work. But what does it tell us? It tells us that there's a lot of people among us living with cancer. Young ones, with family, working, active, member of society. They're like the backbone of society. So, the question is, how are we dealing with chronic illness in the workplace? That is the question. And if we look deeper, we look at the labor law. Labor law in most of the countries worldwide, including United Arab Emirates, labor law only protects human or employees for short-term illness, disregarding chronic illness such as cancer. So at one point in time, cancer patients are laid off by their work. And before I go any farther, I would like to share with you a story. One of my cancer survivors. His name is Giovanni. Life is good. Working, healthy, independent, insured, financially secure, until a visit to the doctor. I am sorry to inform you, but you have cancer. What comes next is even more devastating, because he does not only have to battle cancer, but battle what I call misconception and injustice of this world. Because of cancer, he ended up 
losing his job insurance, he's no longer financially secure, and with that goes one is independency. Instead of finding support during life's most difficult challenge, he ended up with the added stress of losing everything. And that's one case out of many. There are many cases out there that we do not know about. So what we wanted to do is that we wanted to better understand the relationship between cancer survivors and work. And so we start running around like crazy, trying to find a research company to pick up this interesting study. And we're still running around like crazy, trying to find that company. But we said, you know what, in the meantime, let's look at our database. There are a lot of people registered for Pure Heart for Cancer program. And so we looked at, at, at our database and we sent out questionnaires to people who are living here in the United Arab Emirates. And we found out that 70% of the cancer survivors were diagnosed at the time they were working. 30% were not working at the time they were diagnosed. So we're going to take that pool of 70%, it's going to become 100% and we're going to look at it. The people that were diagnosed with cancer at the time they were working took a minimum leave of 21 days to recover from their surgery, returned to work while they were under treatment, taking an average of one to two days off after their chemo session. Okay? Even though they were not in favor of working, they found it important to maintain their job, insurance, source of income, and residency. 60% of them were terminated by their employer. 40% kept their job, they had it. But why did they register with Pure Heart for Cancer? Because they found it important for organization to acknowledge that they have cancer, accommodate, and support. According to the Occupational Rehabilitation Journal, the effect of cancer and its treatment could cause chronic symptoms such as fatigue or tiredness to many cancer survivors that will only allow them to work part-time. The effect of cancer and its treatment could cause cancer survivors to change their line of work. Now, I'll give you an example. Breast cancer. Most women, okay, after surgery, they develop lymphedema in their arm. It's retention of water after the removal of lymph nodes. Now they lose strength, they lose range, they lose power, they lose flexibility in their arm. So if you have someone who used to work as a secretary and say she used to type, I don't know, 80 words per minute, she returns to work and they expect the same out of her, well, her manager is out of his mind. I don't know why I assumed he's a man, but he's still out of his mind. So now he got to do two things. He either accommodate by providing her the tools to perform at that level, and technology has the answers for everything, or modify the job requirement. Now, Dr. Michael Furiston, He's a professor in the US and he's been spending a lot of time researching in the area of cancer survivors and work. And he came up with a model and he writes in the Occupational Rehabilitation Journal. He came up with a model that is called Employment Model and Strategy to Hire Cancer Survivors. And his model, he explains in depth about support, about accommodating, about identifying the qualifications, because qualification is change, and how you can perfectly match them in order to maximize performance and output. Now, I know we don't live in a perfect world, but we do strive for perfection. Planning, controlling, monitoring, evaluating performance, meeting that budget. But when it comes to understanding, caring, developing others, well, it's just as important in the workplace. But this part right here requires empathy. It is the building blocks of ethics. It is the essence of ethics. And it's a missing skill in the business world today. Even though cooperation are becoming corporate social responsible, when it comes 
to their employees, they want to implement regulation and policies to the dot. And that got to change. Cancer survivors, they're very strong, determined. Remember that they have survived a deadly disease. They don't need sympathy. All they're looking for is the right opportunity and the right environment. Um, before, uh, before I end, I just want to mention a few of the projects that we are working on. We are working on a documentary for alternative cancer treatment, and our goal is to educate society about alternative cancer treatment as well with the vision to bring alternative cancer treatment to UEE. The other thing that we're working on is a mobile application with a group of university students. And the mobile application is basically what we want to do is build a community, collaborating all corporate, um, um, collaborating all charitable organization in order to provide a comprehensive support network for cancer patient cancer survivors. And last but not least is research to better understand the relationship between cancer survivors and work. And personally, I believe that's the foundation for change. Thank you.